What's going on, my soul family? Welcome back to another episode of the Awake with Jake show. On today's episode, I'm going to be dropping in and sharing with you how to break free of the matrix. Now, if you've been entrenched in the matrix, then you know how heavy and dense the matrix can be when you're in it and you're not awake. So throughout this episode, I'm going to share with you some different stories that I've gone through, some things I've experienced, and how I've learned to step back and observe the matrix instead of be entrenched in the matrix, and how the ego has played such a big role in my suffering in my life, and how when I started to really awaken, not just from my ego senses, but when I really started to awaken at a soul level, I was able to observe the matrix from a much different standpoint. It became much more interesting in this human experience. Now, before I get into all of this, I want to share with you that my Embodied Intimacy course is currently open for enrollment. Right now, you can save $50 with the early bird pricing, and this ends soon. So if you would like to learn the framework for conscious relationships, masculine and feminine energies, sexual alchemy, and healing, Go to jakewooder.com forward slash embody to enroll today. So maybe you're familiar with the matrix. In this 3D world, everything is designed, for the most part, to keep your mind distracted, to keep your mind busy, to keep the senses of your body entertained. And what loves that is the ego. And the ego is easily manipulated. The ego is easily tricked. It loves validation. It loves chasing the next high. It loves to try to have control over things that it could never possibly control. It loves to get wrapped up in the drama of the matrix and what's going on out there. Because here's the thing, the more you focus on what's going on out there in the world out there, and you distract yourself from your inner world, You never connect to your soul's vibration. And maybe people think, well, Jake, we have to focus on what's going out there sometimes. And yes, we do. But it's the stance that you take in this world and the level of consciousness that you're focusing on out there with. Because in my deepest truth and what I feel to be true, when we are anchored in our soul's vibration and we're anchored in that place that is eternal love and consciousness, we bring that healing into the world. But if we are still in our ego, we are projecting from the unconscious parts of ourself. We are projecting from the models that we think the world should be. We are projecting onto other people on how we think they should be living their lives. And I know I've done a lot of this. So when we're inside of this matrix, when we're plugged into the matrix, we could call it. And believe me, I was plugged in for most of my life until I woke up and I started to gently unplug myself. And believe me, at times it did not feel gentle because when you start to break free of the matrix, you will go through many ego deaths. And it's not fun. It's not comfortable. You're literally going to purge every part of your being. (laughs) And it's not fun. It's, It's a grueling process at times. But as you start to really break free of the grips of the ego that your ego has, you start to become one with your soul and you start to quiet down inside and you become more available to the voice of your soul, to the voice of your heart. And you start leading a life with more love and more compassion, with more understanding, with less projecting onto other people. So when I was about 23 years old, I had taken on this job, this utility job working for this construction company that was truly a great job. Most people that go to work for this company retire 40 years later, maybe in their 60s or 70s. Most people just keep working at this job because it's a pretty easy going job and you get paid really well. So from a matrix standpoint, this was the dream job, right? I had worked really hard to get this job. I got this job. So many people were so proud of me and really stroked my ego. But into this job about maybe six to 12 months, I really started to question what I was doing here on this earth. And I started asking myself deeper questions like, who am I really? Who am I beyond this ego? Who am I becoming in this life? 
why did I really come here? Why did I really come here? What is my real purpose? And I started asking myself these deeper questions. But the thing is, the matrix had had me so hooked that it lured me in to this attractive job to really keep me in the system of this nine to five grind mentality and wore out every single day where I had no extra energy to do anything for myself except plug myself into the matrix, work all day long just to pay bills and buy stuff I really didn't need, right? So that was basically my matrix life. But as I started to awaken to that and I asked myself these deeper, more profound questions about my purpose, about my calling, everything in my life began to change slowly and gradually. I started doing research. I started connecting to my inner spirit. And eventually, I came to the realization that maybe that this job was not going to meet me at the depth that I wanted to be met in this life. So I started saying to myself, I started saying, I can't, I can't work here anymore. I can't have a job that doesn't fulfill me at a soul level. And here's the thing. You can have a job that fulfills you at a soul level and you may love what you do and that's great. And if you found that type of job and you really love it and you feel that you're calling, that's amazing. And I'm not discrediting anybody for having a job. But if you're at a job right now that doesn't fulfill you at a soul level, then I really want you to listen closely to me right now because I have done this. I have walked this path and I'm here to show with you, share with you exactly what that experience was like because it was not easy. I faced a lot of judgment, a lot of rejection in my life. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. And when I decided to leave this job, it was one of the scariest things I ever done in my life, but it was also one of the most liberating things I had ever done in my life. I wrote this resignation letter on a plane to California because I was going to a speaking conference because I was learning how to become a public speaker. I wanted to be a motivational speaker. And remember, I was a fat kid with a stutter. So being a public speaker for me, growing up in a small farm town, I did not know how to speak publicly, okay? I, I was the type of kid that would get called on in class to read out loud and I would run out of the room or hide because I didn't want to read in front of other people because I felt illiterate. And when I woke up to this realization that I needed to learn the, the skills of public speaking, I went and did this conference in California and flew on this plane. And on the plane, I decided to write my resignation letter. And in that resignation letter, I basically challenged everyone in the company to find their deepest work in this life. And when I had sent that in, I was getting messages from people that had worked there. Like, I can't believe you're doing this. Like, you're crazy to leave this job. It's so safe and so secure. I get it. I understand. If that's what you want is safety and security in this life, and you want to feel comfortable and you don't really want to explore the depths of your heart and soul, then that's fine. There's no judgment here. But I did this and I felt liberated. When I kicked those doors open, literally kicked them open and left and knew I was never coming back and this was finally it, it was one of the most liberating experiences I ever felt in my life. And so I did this. I moved into my mother's basement. I had no idea what I was doing. I was completely lost in life. I really hadn't found my purpose. I just knew that I wanted to be of service. I knew I wanted to help people. So this was many years ago too. Like I, I feel so, I feel so excited sharing this with you because it was just like it was just like yesterday, right? <laughs> but I had no idea what I was doing in life, and maybe you felt lost and confused at some point. Maybe you felt like you wanted to serve a deeper purpose, but you had no idea where to start. And my advice for you in that moment is to really start to connect with yourself and start asking yourself more powerful questions. Because when you plant these vibrational seeds inside of you, the universe can start to conspire to help you. Because remember, the universe is not here to get you. It's not out to get you, all right? Nothing is out to get you. <laughs> Maybe your own ego thinks that and it lives in this survival protective mode. But we have to realize that the universe actually wants to help guide us. It wants to help us to discover our path in this life, to be of service, to help other people, to awaken ourselves so we can help other people, so we can help to raise the vibrational consciousness of this world. And this doesn't mean you have to become a life coach or a healer or a motivational speaker. I just invite you to find what lights you up inside and do that often. Because 
right now when I'm recording this podcast episode, it's early Monday morning and most people going to work right now, if they have a job and they're miserable. I remember this. I was miserable going to work on Monday mornings. I hated Sundays because I had to wake up on Monday morning at 4.30 in the morning and go to a job with miserable people that I didn't really want to be at. So by going to that, it was eating away at my soul. And I felt inside this deep yearning for something different. And I truly started asking myself these profound questions that really started planting these seeds inside of me that began the sprouting of my awakening. But in order to go through that, I had to face every single fear and rejection of my ego because my own family was like, what are you doing leaving this this job? Like, that's crazy. You shouldn't be doing this. And all kinds of projections from other people, but also the fears of my own ego, the fear of the unknown. What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? But the thing is, when you send out a positive vibration and a clear intention into the world, and you start to create and manifest things in your life because you become a co-creator with the universe and not a victim of the universe, watch how things in your life really start to change. When you stop the victimization of the ego, which is what I did for a very long time, I played this really good victim role of poor me. I hope people feel bad for me that my dad was abusive or my sister was a heroin addict. And I, I played that story for a long time. But as I started to heal myself from within, I let go of those old stories. And maybe it's time for you right now to let go of an old story that you're holding on to that doesn't serve you anymore. So I'm asking you in this moment, are you holding on to a version of yourself that needs to be let go of? Are you holding on to an old story that no longer serves you? Are you holding on to a job or a relationship that no longer serves you? And I'm asking you these deep questions in this moment because together, you and I, the person listening to this, we can start to challenge the ego so we can break free from the grips of the matrix that it has laid upon your ego. Because the ego is really easily manipulated by this 3D world, the senses, all of it, the feelings, the emotions. It's so entrenched in the emotions. And that's why so many people, including myself for a very long time, are very emotionally reactive because their ego is right there, ready to jump. It's like a barking dog. (laughs) As you train the barking dog, it stops to bark. As you train your ego, that it doesn't need to be in this fight or flight mode all the time. And you connect to the infinite part of yourself. You awaken to realize the depth of your heart and the depth of your soul. And you stop being so afraid in this life. And I think that something that stuck me for so long is the amount of fear that was locked inside of my body. I was so uncomfortable with my body because nothing made sense. Nothing made sense to me. I was just constantly living in this fight or flight mode. I was reacted. I was confrontational. Everything triggered me. But now what I've learned to do is to use my triggers as teachers to help me awaken. I have chosen to take on this earth school, to work through my karmic curriculum. And wherever you are right now is perfect for your path. You're currently working with whatever energy you feel in this moment. If that's excitement, work with it. If that's anger, work with it. If that's sadness, work with it. If that's the energy of, I want to quit this job because I can't freaking stand it, work with that energy. Don't just distract yourself and numb yourself because when you do that, you always stay in this state of ego wanting more, of the ego always longing for more, of the ego clinging to more. And you start to notice the patterns of your ego, the unhealthy patterns. And it takes some discipline to break free of those patterns of the ego that have kept you stuck inside of this matrix, plugged into this matrix. Something else that I really want to talk about too at this point on on our timeline for human consciousness is to really be using your own inner discernment. When you use your discernment, which basically is the ability to judge well with your intuition, you're not so easily influenced by the projections of other people. 
don't feel pressured to do something that doesn't feel right with your body, that doesn't resonate with your being. Just because it's a fad that everyone else is doing something doesn't mean you have to do it. Just because everyone else is following this path doesn't mean you have to follow it. Because if you're listening to this podcast right now, there's a good chance that you are probably different. You are probably the one that has woken up in your family and you are healing the generational bloodline of your whole family lineage. You're not just healing yourself right now. You're healing an entire family lineage. So I want you to remember that as you continue to walk the spiritual path of awakening, that at times it's going to be extremely hard. You're going to feel the pulls of your ego and the clinging of your ego to go back into comfortable situations, into things that keep you unconscious, things that numb you, things that distract you. But when you really sit with this and you really get quiet down inside and you learn who you are at a soul level, you start to remove the veils of your ego, the veils that have kept you in the state of only being able to see yourself, only being able to hear yourself. Because the ego is very selfish. And that's, on a side note, why I think a lot of people fail in relationships, and I know I did for a very long time, is because of how selfish the ego is. It always wants to be right. It always wants to be heard. It always wants to be seen. But it really struggles to allow other people to have their own opinion, to not judge them, to accept them, to hear people, to see people. So as we break free of this matrix-like conditioning, that has been heavily laid upon us, we start to come into this realization that our souls came here from the same source energy, from the same God energy. And we came here because we have a certain set of work that we need to do. And I believe that every single soul that has taken on a birth has gifts that it was given. And in order to find those gifts, you have to really get to know yourself beyond an ego level. And you probably already have a good idea of what those gifts are. Everybody has those gifts and the ability to make this world a better place and the ability to raise the vibration of our human consciousness. I hope that this episode brought you a ton of value. If it did, please take a screenshot of it right now, share it with your Instagram story and tag me. Once again, If you would like to enroll in my Embodied Intimacy course, go to jquitter.com forward slash embody and you will save $50 on the early bird special that ends soon. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. I love you so much and I appreciate you. I hope that you have the best day ever and I hope that you continue to find the answers that you seek. As always, stay open, stay loving, and stay connected to that source within you. 